Okay, so in this video, I'm going to create a front-end application using Next.js to communicate with the Golang API that I created on the previous video. And it's going to use Keycloak for Identity Manager Provider, that is to authenticate users and to work with role-based authorization. So let's start with the codes. We need a folder. Let's open it with Visual Studio Codes. And here I'm going to create a new Next.js application with the latest version and the current directory. You can give here your preferred choices in terms of what to use. I'm going to pick mine. Okay, now we should have um, an empty or default application. We can run it by doing npm run that. So it's listening on that host and port. If I open my browser, I can go to that. And I can see the application. The first thing I'm going to do here is remove the default page. So I go to my main page here and I delete everything. And I'm going to put something very basic here, just a welcome message. I just need to save. And when I go back to my browser, the change is reflected there. Going back here, I can open my layout page. And if I want, I can replace the metadata with other information from my application. And I am going to set here my default structure in terms of layout of the HTML. So that's what I'm going to have uh, a main column here or, or container for the content and a sidebar with the menu navigation and um, an off st status panel, which is like a place to say if the user is authenticated, what is his uh, email and a button to log in, log out, that kind of thing. So let's continue here by adding the navigation components. Um, I'm going to create a folder here called components. And the first one should be added is Nav.js with this kind of content. So basically three links, uh, first to the home page and then one to the page to display a list of all products and one with a form to create a new product. So now that I have the components, I can go to my layout page and import that. And I can add it here. If I save and go back to my browser, I can see the three links there. If I try to click them now, I get 404 errors because those pages do not exist yet. And before creating those pages, I want to add the next auth library, which is the library that we're going to use to manage authentication and authorization. Let's go back to Visual Studio and do npm install next auth. You can see here on my package.json that I have next version 13.4.7 and my next auth is 4.22.1. So to work with next auth in the app directory folder, which is the one I'm using with this latest version of Next.js, I have to start by creating an API folder here and then another subfolder called auth and the catch all next of roots inside of that i need a root.js file this is where we're gonna do all of the configuration for next off and configure some callbacks and um, also do a token refresh when needed so the next off library supports a variety of providers 
if we have a look here this is the full list of uh, providers it supports including Auth0, GitHub, um, Discord, and Okta. We're going to use Keycloak. So let's start by configuring the Keycloak provider. The first step is to import the provider at the top, like that. And we start here on the array of providers by giving the client ID and client secrets. Those come from the front-end client that is configured on Keycloak. I'm going to show you that. I go to my eCloak admin interface. And select my realm. Uh, I go to clients and I have this demo front-end client. If I go to the keys, sorry, credentials, I can see this is my client secrets. And the client ID is the name itself. The issuer is the identification of my realm. So those things I will need to add to my configuration. For the configuration, let me create now the env.local file. And I'm going to add those three variables there with their proper values. And another thing I want to show, if we go to the documentation of next auth, it recommends that we set the next auth URL with the URL of our websites and also the next auth secrets, which is just the secrets that it uses to encrypt and to hash some values. So let's add those two now. I'm gonna open again my env file and add them here. So that's where my application is running. And this one can be any random long string. So to continue our configuration, I'm going to go back here and add our callbacks. You can see that I have a JWT callback. Every time a, a JWT token is created, it's going to call that. The very first time after signing, it's going to give an account information. And on the second, third and subsequent times, this is going to be null. And it's just going to pass the token in here inside of this block. I can set whatever information I need in the token. And the important point here is that the token is sent to the browser, but in an encrypted way. In the end, you're going to have an encrypted cookie, secured cookie in the browser. So it's okay to add sensitive information to the token, like the access token itself, because that will be encrypted. Now, the session callback is going to be called whenever uh, a session is requested, either from a server component or from a client component. We can, in the same way, assign things here. Um, the difference is that whatever information we add to the session is going to be sent to the browser without any encryption. So it's not recommended to put access tokens or ID tokens or refresh tokens or any sensitive information in the session. So let me remove that. And another point is that I can only add things to the session from the token if I had added to the token before. So if I want to add session dot user property like that, I need to have that information passed here. If I don't do that, it's not going to be available at this stage. Let's continue this by adding some more codes. Uh, here. It's going to decode the access token and put all of the properties into a decode, decoded JSON object. Here, it's going to save the access token itself in its original form into the token. The same for the ID token. The ID token is necessary for when we want to terminate a user session on the key cloak side. We also save the expires at, which is when the token is going to expire because we need to check that. And we save the refresh token uh, for when our token expires, we're going to use that to be able to request a new access token. I think I forgot to include this library at the top and I probably need to do npm install sorry npm install jwc decode okay now let me add a few more things 
I'm gonna need this now timestamp and a few more code branches. So I'm gonna add it here. Let me format this. Yeah. So if I am inside of this block, that means it's the first time after signing. So I know for sure that the token is not expired because we are creating a new session. If that is not the case, if it's not the first time I enter this check here to see if the token is still valid. And based on that check, if I am here, I know that the token is valid. So I just return it. Otherwise, if the token has expired, I need to refresh the token. So I'm logging something here just to, to help uh, see that situation. And I'm going to implement that in a later moment. Okay, let me explain something to justify my uh, implementation. Uh, if the front-end application is going to call the something on the REST API and it's a protected resource, normally it needs to send the, the access token in the header of the HTTP call to access the resource. And where do we get that token from? Uh, here we are saving the access token in the JWT token. So in practice, it's going to be inside the encrypted cookie that is sent to the browser. And in the application, how do we access that if we need when it's the moment to call the, the backend API? Normally, uh, Vercel, or oh, sorry, sorry, not Vercel, next of developers, they give you uh, this get token utility that um, in theory it would give us the the token uh, when we call it like that and from inside that token we would be able to get all of the properties that were assigned here the issue i found was that i can't call get token if i am in a server component it just doesn't work uh, and i think it's a, a limitation or a bug there are some discussions on the github discussions page so to work around that problem uh what i'm gonna do is i'm going to add the uh, access token here to my session um, however, because this doesn't get encrypted, I'm going to manually encrypt that. And whenever I need to get my access token, I can get it from the session instead of using this method here. The session can be called from anywhere and that works fine from a client component, a, a server component, a root handler, etc. So for now, I'm going to remove that and I need this utility to encrypt and decrypt information. Let's add that now. So I'm going to create the UTUs and then encryption. So it's using the library uh, crypt R and I have two methods, one to encrypt and the other one to decrypt. And the key is the same used by next off, which is this one. Now we can go back to our callbacks. And here I can add my access token equals token dot access token. And I'm gonna do the same for the ID token. And I'm also going to add the roles here. We need the encryption tool. So import encrypts. And we're going to call that for these two. And this one is okay to be sent in clear text. Now let's go back to the browser. And uh, what I'm going to implement now is this component, auth status. So for that, I go to my components folder and I'm gonna add auth status.js. And this is the contents. So it starts by calling this hook use session that is going to give back the session objects if available and the status. The status could be loading. If uh, it didn't fully retrieve the session yet, we show an indication that it's still loading. Otherwise, the session object is known or the session is loaded and we may have a session or not. If we do have a session, 
that means the user is authenticated and we show logged in us and the user's email uh, if we don't have a session that means the user is logged out and we we say that and offer a button to log in um, those two buttons use functions from next off so the signing uh, is going to take the user to the authentication page on Keycloak. In this case, Keycloak, because I'm passing that ID, which is the ID of my provider, to the signing function. Uh, and here in the sign out function, this is the destination where the user is going to be redirected to after the sign out is completed. We can add that new component now to our layout. So let's go to layout and import that at the top. Uh, and replace this with auth status like that. Let's save and have a look at the browser. I think the application is not running. Okay. Use session must be wrapped in a session provider. That is expected because I'm using the session inside of auth status, but I haven't I haven't added the session provider to my layout. So normally in the documentation of next auth, they teach you to do that. Um, session provider that imports, and then we surround the layout or the container with that. The problem is we have another error. React context is unavailable in server components. That's because this is not a client component. My layout page is a server component and this needs to be in a client component. Uh, what can we do about that? One option is to convert the whole layout into a client component, uh, which I don't like very much because we wouldn't need to have the layout as a client component if it wasn't for this issue. So another thing is that we can create a wrapper for the session provider and make only that wrapper a client component. And that is what I prefer to do. Let's create that wrapper now. I'm going to go to UTs and add a new file called sessionproviderwrapper.js and have that inside which is just using the normal session provider but this is a client component we have that at the top and we are just wrapping in the normal session provider all of the children that are passed into these components so what we have to do now is go back to layouts and import our wrapper instead of this one and replace that with our wrapper yeah, so I'm going to save and go back to the browser, refresh. Unsupported server components type. There's something wrong. I think I haven't saved that, so I'm going to save now. And we are good. We can see our um, auth status components. I can log in and log out. Actually, when I opened this for the first time, I had already uh, an active token for some reason. I think it was because of the tests I, I was making before. But if I click that login button now, um, I get that error. That means Keycloak needs uh, the redirect URI to be set in our client. Otherwise, it doesn't allow us to authenticate. So if we go to the client, let's, which is this one, we can see the valid redirect URIs. We don't have the one for our application. Um, what we can do is add it here. So HTTP uh, localhost 3000. And we can use a wildcard like that to make all of the possible paths valid for that host and port. So I'm going to save that. Go, go back to my application and try again. And I get the normal authentication window now. I can log in with the user. That user, just to show it exists here on Keycloak. And I see my email address here. See, my email is that one. 
and I can log out and log in. You see, this is a strange behavior because I'm asking to log in, but it's not taking me to the authentication page. This happens because when I click log out here, it terminates the next auth session and logs out from next auth. However, the key cloak session remains active. So this is one thing we need to do. We need to put some extra code to terminate the session on the key cloak side so that when we go and log in, it presents the form to enter the username and password again. So let's add that now to our auth status components. I'm going to add a new function here, keycloak session logout, and it's going to call an API on the server of the front-end application. And we call that here. So instead of this normal sign out, I'm going to have keycloak session logout, which is my new function. And then after that, I do a normal sign out. So I have to implement that. But before I implement, I just need one extra utility here, which is going to be the token accessor. It's going to look like this. Um, we have a decrypt import at the top. Uh, we get the session. And if we do have that session, we decrypt the access token to give back to the caller of that. And the same for the ID token. So we are just decrypting the information that had been encrypted in here. So these two. When we create the session, we add things to the session encrypted because it's sent to the browser and we don't want that information to be visible. So in the application, when we are going to use those two things, we need to decrypt them. And that's why we have this helper class. So now we can implement the logout API. I'm going to have here a logout folder. It should be inside of auth. And I need the root.js file. I'm going to have that. First, the get ID token from the utility class I've just created. So this. So it gets the session. If I do have a session, it gets the ID token. And then it calls keycloak on this URL, passing the ID token because it's a requirement. And it also indicates a redirect URI. Uh, in this case, it's the root of the application. Uh, it issues that request, the get request to, to Keycloak. If something bad happens, we just log and return a 500. Otherwise, we just return the OK status code. So now we have the API. We can save. We can save this one as well. There is just one missing bit, which is the URL of the end session. It's a new variable I have to add here like that so we have a logout endpoint on keycloak we can give it a go go to the browser logouts and i got the authentication window which what was i was expecting we can do that again and it works so the logout is ending the session in next auth and on the key clock side, which is just what we want. So now I'm going to add this page here to get all products. For that, I'm going to create a products folder inside app. And inside the products folder, I'm adding a page.js. This is going to be a server component. I'm going to add the code now. It starts here by getting the session. Um, I check if the user is authenticated and if the user has the expected role. If yes, in this case, it's calling this function get all products, which is um, a call to the backend API. So here I have the URL of the, the backend API and the path to the resource. I send a GET request passing the access token here. The access token comes from this method, which is from our token accessor, this guy here. And, uh, sorry, let me go back. If all goes well, I return the JSON of that GET request or an error if something bad happens. 
In terms of what I rendered, this, this is just a normal table with um, a body and all of the products or the elements that uh, come from the API in this collection. So I'm rendering the ID, the name and the price. If there is an error, uh, we fall into this catch block uh, and we, we render an error message like that. And finally, outside of this check, if I have a session and if I have the role, if that evaluates to false, I redirect the user to the unauthorized page. That means he's not authorized to view the list of products. We need one extra configuration here, which is the URL of our backend service. So I'm adding that and we can give it a go. Let's go to the browser and log in. And if I click products, I can see the component loaded just fine. I don't have any products yet on my backend because I haven't created any, but you can see that the component is working okay. Let's take the chance and add the unauthorized page. So for that, it's very simple. We just need a folder unauthorized and we need a page.js. Inside of that page.js, I'm just going to show a simple error message like that. I'm going to save and go back to my browser. I'm going to log out. And if I try to access now the products page, I get that unauthorized error. Now, there is a very strange bug in Next.js where uh, I have a server component like in this page here or, or, or a page that is rendered on the server. And I click that link the first time it goes to the server and renders the page. And then um, if I go to the home and then click that page a second time or a third time, it's not going to go to the server. It's going to use a cached version. And there is currently no easy way in terms of configuring that link to make it perform a hard navigation. That means going to the server every time. Um, I know there is a this long discussion in the Next.js uh, GitHub page and um, it's this one for 2991. Uh, it's still not fixed yet by the time I, I record this video, uh, but there are workarounds and the workaround that I chose to, to implement is this one um, where um, we have a, a client component called here set dynamic roots. And if we add that client component to our server components, then that triggers the hard navigation. Every time you click that link, it's going to go to the server and, and re-render the the server components. So I'm going to add that now. First, this component here, this helper component. You see that it uses router.refresh in the end. That's what makes a, a difference. So let, let me copy that and go to my use folder. And I can do set dynamic roots and paste that and I can import it and add it like that. In my case, it's the products page. So let me import that first. And I'm going to add it uh, maybe here. It's an invisible component. Um, I'm going to also do console log with any number like that and go back to our browser. That's because the token expired. We just have to authenticate again. So if I click and go back and do that a few times, we can see in the logs that it rendered in the server as many times as we clicked. So we can see the number repeated here many times. If I um, remove that and save, let me show you again. It only 
rendered the first time and then it used the cache to render the subsequent times. And why is it important to render every time in this case? Because we are checking for authentication. So um, let's say uh, the user is not authorized anymore to access that page. I don't want a cached version to show up. And another scenario is when we mutate the data. So I go to the create product page and I create a new one. When the list of products changes, I, I want the new version to show up, not the cached version. Uh, if the old list shows up, it's a bad user experience. So that's why in this case, I want the server component to re-render every time the, the link is clicked. I'm going to continue now by adding the, the, the other page, the create product page. And for that, I need a new folder here and a new page.js file. This component is going to be a client component, as you can see at the top. Um, in the beginning of the components, you can see that I'm using a number of hooks, the React hooks. The first one is to get a session. Uh, we request a session and we get back the session object if available and the status if it's loading or not. We are also using the router. Um, and this use effect is executed when the component is loaded or when one of those things change and it checks to see if the user is authenticated and has the required role. If not, it uses the router to push a new URL and redirect the user to outside of this page. Now, um, I have two refs and that's because I have a form with two text boxes, one for the name and the other one for the price. And I use the refs to be able to access the values of those two text boxes. And I also have the use state hook to um, render an error message in case something goes wrong. I continue here by checking the status of the session that comes from this call. Um, if it's still loading, it just displays something like that, an in indication that it's still loading. Here, if the user has proper permissions, uh, it's going to render the form. Uh, the form has uh, the two text boxes we mentioned, product name and price, and they use the refs. And it also has a, a space to render error messages um, and a button to create the product. If that button is clicked, it's going to go to the own submit event of the form and call the handle submit function. This is a client side function. We can see it here. So the first thing we do is to prevent default. So the form is not uh, submitted to the server. We stop that. We create a post body with the information from the text boxes and we post that body to an API on the demo frontend server. This is not going directly to the REST API in Golang. It's going to the server of this application first. That's because I don't have the access token here on the client side. I have it server side, but not client side. So I'm going to the server first like that. And then the server calls the REST API. If everything is okay, I am redirecting the user to the list of products so that he can see the new product that he created. Otherwise, if there is an error message, I set the state of that hook to set the, the error message to that uh, variable and that will reflect automatically in here. I guess that is it. We can save this file and we can go and proceed to create the API for that. So I'm going to go to API and create a folder here called products and a file roots.js. I'm going to have a code like this. Standard again, I get the session. If the user is authenticated, I um, create a URL like that pointing to my Golang REST API. Uh, in, in that resource, this is a post request. I'm posting the body that I got from the, the, the request and I authorized in the header with the access token. If the response is okay, I send back 
the the data with uh, the proper status that it's okay we can save that file and probably we can already test let's log out log in I think I don't have in that user the admin role, so I need to go back to Keycloak and in role mapping. Yeah, it's only viewer, so I need to assign the admin role. Um, now I need to authenticate again. And I can access my form. So first product. 100 creates and I can add another one and it works so you may have noticed that I had an error here in red a few times when I needed to log out and log back in to refresh my token and that was because I set my token to expire in one minute so this is the configuration on Keycloak it's in realm settings and then tokens and we can define how long a token is valid for I set it to one minute on purpose so that I could test my refresh token I, I don't need to wait too long just one minute but the idea now is to implement the code to refresh the token automatically if my JWT is expired and I click a link that checks for authentication and if the token is expired it should go to Keycloak and request a new access token automatically without requiring the user to type his username and password again and that's what I'm going to implement now so for that, I need to go back to my configuration, the root JS for next auth configuration. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a new function at the top called refresh access token. This goes to Keycloak websites um, using Keycloak's uh, REST API, and it's going to post a form with this encoding, uh, passing the client ID and client secrets from our uh, clients, the demo frontend clients. Uh, the grant type is refresh token because that's how it works in this endpoint. And we pass the refresh token contents in that call. If it all works fine, what I get here is a new token. So I return the original token, but I reassign some of those properties like the new access token I save. Um, I decode again the access token to save the new set of um, JSON uh, properties here in the decoded, the new ID token, the new expired expires at, and the new refresh token. So basically this section is equivalent to this part here, except this one happens after the first login, and this one happens when the token is refreshed. So what I have to do now is add a call to that function from this place here. So if the token is expired, we are going to try to refresh it. So we call that function, get back a refreshed token and return it. If an error happens, what I'm doing here is signaling by using a new, an extra property called error with that identifier and that goes in the token. So um, that basically is going to be consumed by our auth status components to, so that it can understand that there was an error with the refresh process and it can um, automatically force the user uh, to a sign out. Uh, we're going to see that in a moment. That error needs to be transferred from the token to the session. So we're going to do that here. And another thing is that we need to add the new refresh token URL to our configuration. Let's do that. And the last part is in auth status components. So we are going to add a new use effect hook. Let's import that first. And it's going to be like this. So if it gets a session, it, the session is not loading, it gets a session and the session has an error property, the one we defined before, it's going to force a sign out and redirect the user to the root of the website. So I think we can test now our refresh token behavior. Uh, I'm going to log out and log in. 
And because it's set to one minute, let's wait for that time. Okay, so now I know for sure that my token is expired. Um, I can see here my log logged in status, but the token inside of that is expired. So if I go to my logs, they are clear. I'm going to try and access this product page. I can see that the token ha has expired, we'll refresh and it refreshed. So it all worked. I didn't get that weird error message. It automatically refreshed my token and loaded the, the page. That concludes my um, demo for today, the front-end application and the whole proof of concept. I'm going to put the source code um, in GitHub repository. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.